Hey, welcome back to Bandwagon Fans. This is Jeff, and this is actually my second to last review of 2018. Um, you can also check out um, the links below. You can check out my best of 2018, the worst of 2018, and a little video I'm calling a time capsule, seven movies that best represent the United States in 2018. So check out all those links down below. And as always, like and subscribe to this channel. Help keep me going for 2019. Um, so for this, I'm, I'm not going to be doing a single movie. I'm actually going to kind of look at all of the big blockbusters, all of the kind of the geek dork blockbusters of, of December, the holiday season. And that's going to be Aquaman, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and Bumblebee. So first off, I'm just going to talk a good little of the nuts and bolts for each movie. Uh, Aquaman being the latest entry in the DCEU from Warner Brothers. Some people are calling this kind of the salvation or turning point of, of the DCEU. Um, so this is kind of a, a reimagine, not really a reimagining, but kind of an updated version of the, of, you know, the, the, the joke Aquaman of, with the, from the Super Friends cartoon. This isn't that Aquaman. This is starring Jason Momoa as Arthur Curry um, and definitely kind of badass up Aquaman, just like we saw in Justice League. Um, Amber Heard stars as Mira, and then you have uh, Patrick Wilson as Ocean Master, and then a pretty large ensemble cast um, past that. We might, I'll, as I talk about different characters, we'll, we'll get into the, the actors who, who played them. And then, of course, this is directed by James Wan, who is really putting himself forward as uh, maybe the go-to director for, along with, um, um, as the go-to director for the DCEU. So. Um, this has been kind of killing, Aquaman has been killing it at the box office, but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of get into a comparison of all three movies here in a second. So next up is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, this is uh, animated, an animated cartoon um, directed by, let's see, Bob Persichetti, Peter Ramsey, and Rodney Rothman. Three, three directors on this one with, uh, with an assist on the screenplay by Phil Lord. Um, this one starring uh, Shamiak Moore as Miles Morales and brings in a whole bunch of different um, different Spider-Man characters, um, including Jake Johnson as, a, as a, an older Peter Parker, Haley Steinfeld as Gwen Stacy or, or Spider-Gwen, um, Kamiko Glenn as, as a Japanese version of Spider-Man, and John uh, Mulaney and Nicholas K. John Mulaney as uh, um, Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Ham, and Nicolas Cage as Spider Noir. Uh, this one is also doing pretty well at the box office, but it's really killing it with critics, with, uh, um, with a lot of people calling it the best Spider-Man movie ever made. I'll talk about that again in, the, in a few minutes. Um, but anyways, doing really well with critics and audiences alike, but not making, not doing quite as well in the box office and the last movie I'm going to be talking about is Bumblebee, directed by Travis Knight. Um, a little bit of a smaller, tighter cast. Uh, Haley Steinfeld as uh, Charlie, who kind of replaces the, the Stan Witwicky character. And John Cena as uh, a defense or some kind, of a, some kind of a government agent who is out to catch Bumblebee. Um, so this one, out of the three movies, is struggling at the box office the most but it's, it's comparatively kind of in between Aquaman and Spider-Verse in terms of uh, critic reception. So, um, so that's kind of the nuts and bolts of the movies. My, my immediate reaction, um, Spider-Man was the most fun out of all these three movies, was, uh, is earning all its accolades, uh, def definitely enjoyed it. The animation was uh, varied um, and went through several different styles of animation but really, really popped and really, really showed, it kind of sh really showed the strength of animation in terms of what you can do in an animated film versus a live action film. Um, there's, there's a lot of crazy scenes you can do that live action just would, would not have looked right, but with animation, you can, you can get away with it. And they definitely took that to full effect. So out of the three movies, Spider-Man is, would, I would put Spider-Man as number one. Uh, and actually, it, it made an honorable mention for my best of 2018. Uh, really strong movie, definitely earning all of its accolades, and 
is going is going to kind of revitalize Sony Spider-Man universe. Um, they actually might be better served just give up on the live action, leave that to Marvel, and just continue to develop what they have in this animated universe. That that could actually be pretty interesting. Uh, second second up for me is going to be Bumblebee. Uh, this is actually the first Transformers movies I've seen all the way through. I have absolutely zero interest in going back and watching the, the previous entries. But Bumblebee was just a lot of fun. Um, I'm gonna, I'll talk a little bit more specifically about Travis Knight's approach versus Michael Bay's. Um, but this was, this felt like a John Hughes movie actually. Like it was uh, definitely paid a, a lot of homages to 80s, 80s film. It was uh, set in 1987. Um, a lot, a lot, a ton of references to Breakfast Club and some scenes that looked like it was straight out of E.T., uh, some scenes that were definitely lifted from 16 Candles. It def had that 80s teen movie vibe, and it was just, it was just a lot of fun, and, you know, nothing, uh, you know, deepest pizza, but a lot of fun. Uh, the actors committed to what they were doing, and I definitely enjoyed it. It's not going to make anybody's best of list, won't, won't, didn't make mine. But it's still just a really fun movie. Last up on this list, uh, Aquaman, and this movie was uh, just to be honest, it was flat out painful for me to watch. Uh, this movie runs comes in at just under two and a half hours, and you're, you're going to hear a lot of people talk about um, how bloated it was, how much they packed into this movie, and for me, it was it was way too much. Um, most of you by now have already, if you're going to see Aquaman, you probably already have. It's been out for a couple weeks already. Um, <clears throat> it starts off with a, it starts off with Black Manta as the villain. And it's 45 minutes into the movie, at least, before you're even introduced to Patrick Wilson as Ocean Master, who is actually the main villain in the movie. And then Black Manta gets beat off. <laughs> Sorry, poor choice of words. Get be gets beaten, um, you know, with pretty much before the third act even starts, and then it's just Ocean Master. So you almost have you almost have two one and a half hour movies that overlapped each other, and there just came a point where I had to get up and go for a walk, get a, get a soda, go to the bathroom because like I physically could not sit in my chair any longer. Uh, every scene, the, the repetition of the movie was, was horrendous. So, you know, every scene was people talking, explosion, fight, and reset. People talking, explosion, fight, and reset. People talking, explosion, fight, and every single scene followed that pattern. And it just, and it just it, at some point, I didn't care if each scene was choreographed well they started blurring into each other. Um, and I, 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 like I said, I left the theater for, I don't know, seven or eight minutes, and I don't think I missed anything. So that, to me, that's a, that's a sign of a pretty bad movie when you can miss a big chunk of it and not miss anything important or relevant. So uh, Aquaman, one of, get doing fairly well with audiences. Um, it's got a 7.6 IMDb score and an A minus cine score, cinema score. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has it at 64%, def by far the worst of the three movies. Um, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse is doing really well uh, with audiences and critics alike 8.7 IMDb, A plus cinema score, 97 on Rotten Tomatoes. And Bumblebee is actually doing pretty well. Um, Holding its own with Aquaman, as far as audiences go, 7.3 in IMDb. Actually, also doing really well with critics at 93% for uh, for Rotten Tomatoes and an A-minus cinema score. So, Aquaman is taking all the money, but is by far not the best movie. And and it's uh, I, I really wish Bumblebee was doing better. Um, some of the some of the themes in the in the various movies. Uh, actually, I want to talk about Bumblebee first. So um, obviously Michael Bay was the director on the previous five Transformers movies. And from what I've heard, again, I'm not gonna go back and watch them, but from what I've heard, they just kept getting progressively worse and worse. And Michael Bay has a particular style that I don't care for. Uh, obviously it's popular because he's making a crap ton of money. Um, but th this, this Travis, Knight's, Travis Knight's version of Bumblebee, which is kind of an origin of the Transformers on Earth, as 
far from a Michael Bay movie as you could possibly get. Um, uh, Haley Steinfeld, at no point in this movie was she shot like overly suggestive or sexualized. It was, she was just shot as, as a person doing certain action. Um, <clears throat> if there's one critique I'd have the movie, it, it went too far and trying to tug at the heartstrings and building up this, uh, this relationship between Bumblebee and uh, Haley Steinfeld. But that, that's a minor critique. You know, there were some scenes that, just, that did kind of drag on. It's like, okay, we get it. She loves him. She's like a pet, like a friend. She's going to miss him if he leaves. Okay, can we move along now? Um, that's kind of the only criticism I had, but it was refreshing to have if, if, if you were going to have a movie directed, a Transformers movie directed by a woman and, and told for a woman audience, female audience, it would definitely look like this. Um, so again, as far, as far from a Michael Bay movie as you're ever going to get, and, and especially in a Transformers movie. Um, it's kind of the an, 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 an antithesis of, of Michael Bay film, even though, even though he was still one of the, the, the lead producer on it. Uh, Spider-Man, I don't have a whole lot to say about this. It's just, it's just an incredibly well-made movie with a really good story. Some pretty good twists. Um, the 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 this universe, the the Miles Morales universe, is clearly different from the Spider from the Peter Parker Spider-Man universe we're used to, where Gwen Stacy died. Um, it's actually one of one of the Spider-Man that comes in comes from what would be our universe or what we know of as Spider-Man. Uh, but this is a different universe, and then. Uh, just a really good job of taking what could have been a pretty complicated topic as far as multiverses and how all these people came together. Um, they did a pretty good job of of making it, of explaining what was going on without being uh, a Wikipedia page and also keeping it entertaining. So, um, like I said, this this is a this I think Sony would be well served to 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 just really focus on this maybe release one or two of these movies a year and let it build an audience. Um, like it's, it's doing okay at the box office, but not gangbusters. But I think they've established something that two or three movies down could be huge. And then uh, Aquaman, what can you say about it? You know, um, Jason Momoa did, I'll say that if you're gonna do an Aquaman movie, Jason Momoa is the right person to play it, to play Arthur, Aquaman. This is the right approach to, to make Aquaman be taken seriously. Man, just c cut this movie in half. Either do the Black Mana story and save uh, Ocean Master for later, or do the Ocean Master and save Black Mana for later. Because it just, it was just way, way too much. And in terms of Aquaman being a turning point for the DCEU, yeah. It, it is at least in terms of in terms of ticket sales. It's you know it's making a ton of movie. I think it may have already surpassed Wonder Woman. Um, if it hasn't already, it's definitely going to surpass Wonder Woman. It's got a really good shot at cracking the one billion dollar club, which would be the first for the DCEU. Um, but in terms of movie making and storytelling, it's at, I think it's kind of a step backwards, or or if if not backwards, at least sideways. It's just more of this. Uh, just more of this, uh, <laughs> on one hand, incredibly simple, basic story and needlessly complicated. Um, <clears throat> better than, better than, De better than uh, Batman versus Superman and Justice League, but um, definitely a step back from Wonder Woman. And like I said, for, for me, it didn't work. For a lot of people, a lot of people are raving about it, how much fun it was. If you buy, if you think you could handle a two and a half hour um, version of like Pacific Rim, this would be a good movie for you. Just turn off your brain for two and a half hours, watch action after action after action. You would probably enjoy this. Uh, for some of us, it's it was just it was just way too much. Um, so anyways, those are, those are the three big blockbusters. Aquaman is king of the ocean and king of the box office for December. It is absolutely crushing. 
Spider-Man is going to be getting some um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Got a little kitty here. Is going to be getting some serious, serious award contention. And Bumblebee, man, I, I really, I'm really pulling for this movie. It was, it was a cute little movie. This might be the end for this incarnation of the Transformers universe. They, they, they may look at these box office receipts and just decide to, to go in a completely different direction. But uh, hopefully. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully they can. One, I think one of the biggest issues with Bumblebee is <clears throat> it's just a crowded month. There is so much out in December this year. Uh, I think they would have been well served to, to delay Bumblebee, maybe release it end of January or early February, and it probably would have found a better audience. But um, Bumblebee actually getting, you know, really getting killed at the box office. But hopefully, uh, hopefully they stay the course and, and give this iteration of Transformers another try. So um, those are the those are the three blockbusters, according to me and um, according to the critics in general and, and audience reactions. So um, what do you think about the movies? Did you get did you get a chance to see any of them or all of them? Um, how would you rank the three movies and how would you rank some of the other big movies that came out like Mary Poppins, um, the return of Mary Poppins? So. And that's going to be it for uh, for this review. I've got one more that I'm going to be doing, and that's going to be the Dick Cheney biopic Vice. So check, so look for that as well. And until then, looking forward to seeing you all in 2019. I'm Jeff. Get on the bandwagon.